Folks on YouTube have been exposed for all sorts of things. Alleged cryptocurrency scams, cheating in Minecraft, child abuse, being a predator, you name it. There's literally thousands of examples of popular exposed videos airing out another's dirty laundry on this platform. But what's far more rare and infinitely more compelling are YouTube's confession videos. Cases where online figures or YouTubers have outright confessed in their own words to scandalous behavior or alleged criminal activity. Today we'll be looking at the confessions of various notable online figures that have wound up on YouTube. From a self-described virgin with rage allegedly confessing to incest, to a beloved online comedian revealing his disturbing sexual fantasies during a child predator sting, these are some of YouTube's most scandalous confessions. My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. This is my confession. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. If you've watched my channel for any good measure of time, you know that the internet can be a dangerous place. Hell, all it takes is one bad link being clicked and some Malaysian hacker stolen your credit card info and is buying a Lamborghini with it. And with that being said, did you know that identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America? You gotta keep your identity protected out there, guys, and that's why I use the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy-to-use app. Aura keeps your accounts and identity under lock and key, notifying you the moment any unusual activity or password changes are detected on one of your accounts. You'll also be notified if any of your accounts were affected by a company data breach. And thanks to Aura, I actually found out that one of my accounts was involved in one of these breaches. Definitely going to want to change that password. Aura also has an in-app credit score feature, so you're up to date with your credit health, and it also notifies you of any suspicious credit changes or loans being taken out in your name. There's a lot of companies out there that offer the individual services that we've talked about today, but Aura really is the best place to get all of them in one convenient hub. You guys can go to Aura.com wavy to try 14 days for free and protect yourself from America's fastest growing crime. Man, let me tell you something, dog. This ain't got a mother thing to do with allegations and all this. This has everything to do with pure jealousy. Our first story just might be the most scandalous caught in 4K moment in the history of YouTube. It's the absolutely mind-melting story of then-beloved YouTuber EDP445 coming face-to-face -face with a group of child predator hunters. The live-streamed confrontation essentially serving as a confession that revealed disturbing and career-ending secrets kept hidden by the comedian. Bryant Moreland, known online as Eat That Pussy 445 or EDP445, really needs no introduction. Thanks to the success of various viral clips published to his YouTube channel, Brian's presence on the internet in the last decade has been inescapable. I said he needed no introduction, and here I am giving an introduction. Well, I already started, might as well keep going. EDP was primarily known as being a Philadelphia Eagles super fan that would often go on vulgarity-laden rants every time the team lost. <laughs> And he was also known for his signature brand of self-deprecating comedy, where he often joked about his weight or uh, explained his masturbatory habits in a grotesque, hyperbolic detail. I beat my dick so goddamn hard that I can't even feel my left leg. My left leg has went totally numb. While most knew EDP for his viral comedy videos, he did have a hardcore sect of fans that tuned in for the more personal side of Bryant. Bryant often candidly shared videos to his channel explaining personal struggles in life, from loneliness to stress at work to various family drama. Five years ago, I received the news that, um, my mom had died. You know, she wouldn't be around to see me get my first car, my first girlfriend, my first kiss. EDP appeared to be an open book and would share his personal life frequently with fans. 
And in a sea of YouTubers who stick to the script and just try to remain as ad friendly as possible, EDP stood out. He had the rare gift of being able to connect with his audience on a personal level. Viewers related to him and appreciated his candid personality and keeping it real attitude. Considered by some as one of the funniest and realest YouTubers on the platform, EDP enjoyed great success, eventually passing the 1 million subscriber milestone to great fanfare and was revered within the YouTube community by his creative peers. But in time, cracks would begin to show in EDP445's online persona. It all started in early 2020 when EDP uploaded an eyebrow raising video titled Good Luck Exposing My Ass. In this now deleted video, a visibly frustrated EDP goes on a expletive laden rant. In a roundabout way suggesting that he had sent flirtatious messages to a girl on Instagram only to later find out that the girl was 15 years old. He says that a small group of people knew about this interaction and were plotting to cancel him. And I see this one chick, right? Hispanic chick, right? And then later on, come to find out this bitch was 15 years old. Oh, EDP is exposed. Oh, your fans ain't gonna like you no more. Oh, EDP is exposed. As a woman, when you wear clothes like that, let's be real. You're trying to get attention from guys. Oh man, we're going to expose e EDP. You can't expose me. And guess what? I don't give a f Knowing what we know now about EDP, this video was an obvious red flag. But at the time of its release, few considered the video to be problematic and thought the 30 year old's engagement with the 15 year old on Instagram to be an honest mistake. But then more evidence of creepy EDP behavior just kept bubbling up such as the following voice recording allegedly sent by EDP to an underage girl who is asking for a birthday shout out to give to her boyfriend. Lucy, you better show me some titties. Come on, you want me to wish that nigga happy birthday? You better show me some titties or something, shit. Oh my God, EDP, like she's 14, like she's 15. I don't give a f nigga if the bitch is one. Ain't shit free in this mother Additionally, a disturbing screenshot allegedly showing a conversation between Bryant and an anonymous 17 year old girl would surface. Big Playboy 445 says, You're cute and stuff, just worried this might be a fake profile. The supposed 17 year old girl says, No, I keep it 100. That's for kids. We can just be with each other. Big Playboy responds threateningly, If you fuck me over and I find this convo someplace on the internet like Twitter or even in a YouTube video, I swear on my mom's soul I'll find your ass. Don't think for one second just because you're hiding behind a damn phone you can't be found. As more evidence was brought to the table, a small yet vocal minority of fans would start accusing EDP of being a predator in his comments section, and they would jump ship from the channel. Some smaller YouTubers even began discussing EDP's creepy behavior. Take for example OG Cold Raven, who would make a multi-part video series attempting to expose EDP. Whisperings of these allegations slowly began making their way around the community. Dodging the allegations once again, are we? I exposed you for texting five different underage girls. I exposed the fact that you fell for a decoy asking for illicit pictures. They said they were 16, just turned 17 inside of the combo. Um, you know, you're just lucky that no big channel has really picked up on it. People are gonna want to know what's happening. And you know, you're finally gonna get exposed for the sick pedophile that you are. The rising scrutiny would prompt EDP to make another video addressing these allegations. And in the video, he essentially uses the argument of, Hey guys, you know me. You know me, EDP445. I would never do anything like this. I would never do anything creepy. If you honestly believe that I'm a pet, you're high. That makes sense to me. Despite the objectively dog shit defense presented in this video, the majority of EDP's loyal fan base were satiated by his denials, and the man continued to enjoy a prosperous career for some time, eventually passing the 2 million subscriber milestone sometime around the new year. But in 2021, things were different. As in April of this year, evidence would come forward that would turn the entire internet on its head, exposing EDP 445 for the sick and disgusting disgusting individual that he truly was. Let this be known, I am not a 
On April 19th, the Predator Poachers, a YouTube-based child predator catching group, would boot up a live stream. In this live stream, a member of the group would explain that their organization had created a decoy account on Instagram posing as a 13-year-old girl named Sophie. The poachers allege that EDP had been interacting with the account over a two-month period. What follows is a nearly two hour long live stream of the host reading the disgusting messages allegedly sent by EDP 445 to someone he thought was a 13 year old girl. After a grueling two hour trudge through these disturbing messages, the chat logs appear to end with EDP in the decoy arranging a meetup at an apartment complex. The live stream's host would then reveal that this meetup actually happens and the predator poachers confronted EDP at the apartment complex and caught it all on camera. The following day, the damning footage would be released to the internet. His predatorial behavior could be denied no longer. During the confrontation, he confessed to everything. So what brings you out here today? Well, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake <laughs> and then go back home. The only thing deterring you based on these messages, it wasn't the fact she was young. It was jail time that was deterring you, yes or no? Okay. Right, like if the cops saw these messages and saw you here, would they have arrested you, yes or no? Correct. Okay. Do so you, you think you deserve to go to jail? If I'm being honest with you... You don't think so? I think so. You think so? I okay. Think so. Hey bro, you wanna call the cops? Please don't, man. Why not? How about you call the cops? You call the cops. You want mm -hmm. help? Call the cops. You should call the cops. Call go the ahead. Cops. Yeah, people knew EDP was a creep, but they didn't know that it was this deep. And an exposed caught in 4K moment of this caliber had never once before been witnessed on YouTube. The video of this nearly hour long sting operation spread around the internet like wildfire. It got so big that even mainstream media outlets were discussing it. In the wake of the sting, EDP would essentially go into hiding and folks were waiting on the edge of their seat, hoping that he would be arrested. However, that arrest would never happen. Despite police being called at the scene of the sting and being bombarded with calls from the internet and EDP's clear admissions here, no formal investigation was ever opened on EDP 445. The reason for EDP evading charges is still a bit of a mystery to this day, but many have boiled it down to being incompetence by the predator poachers. Some speculate that the methods used to acquire EDP's confession by the poachers was considered entrapment and their evidence inadmissible in a court case. I'm admittedly no expert on this subject, but I've seen plenty of commentary suggesting that if the poachers had actually notified police before their sting, EDP would very likely be in jail right now. If you have some insight regarding this, drop a comment below. Whatever the case, this incident and the publicity surrounding it would end EDP's career overnight. He went from being beloved by millions to detested by virtually everyone on the internet. In the wake of being exposed, EDP's YouTube channel was terminated and his Facebook and Instagram accounts were banned. The only real existence EDP has on the internet is in the form of a website created earlier this year. The site offers pay to watch stream content and cameo like shout out services, but for all intents and purposes, the man's ability to monetize himself online has been eliminated as a result of his own disgusting behavior. In what might be one of the most infamous YouTuber exposed slash confession moments in the history of the platform, that was the story of EDP 445. I killed a man. I was out with some friends. We were all drinking really heavily. Just hopping from bar to bar. Just trying to have a good time and I lost control. Our next story involves a man who is responsible for a deadly crime. After committing this crime, he uploaded a shockingly candid video to YouTube, confessing to his wrongdoings in front of millions of people. This seemingly unprompted confession would lead to him becoming imprisoned some time later. So what's the story with that? Let's get into it. This story begins on the night of June 22nd in 2013 in Columbus, Ohio. 61 year old Vincent Canzani, a locally renowned photographer is driving on Interstate 670. While peacefully cruising along, Vincent Canzani sees the last thing anyone wants to see while driving down the interstate. A pair of headlights on his side of the road speeding directly towards him. Moments later, this wrong way driver collides head on with Vincent Canzani, resulting 
resulting in a horrifically violent collision. Both vehicles essentially turned into heaps of scrap metal. Motorists that witnessed the crash immediately dialed 911. When responders arrived and had eyes on the scene, they likely expected there to be no survivors. But after rescue efforts, they discovered that the man who was driving the wrong way vehicle was actually still alive. This man would be identified as local resident 22-year-old Matthew Cordell. Cordell was promptly taken to the hospital to receive emergency care for lacerations suffered during the crash. Vincent Canzani, the apparent victim in the collision, wasn't so lucky, as after an inspection of his vehicle, Canzani was pronounced dead at the scene. Considering the nature of this collision, police immediately suspected Matthew Cordell of driving under the influence. They would later acquire a search warrant in order to collect medical information from Cordell's hospital visit. This would result in police getting a medical update from staff who described Matthew Cordell as, quote, very drunk. Blood tests would confirm these anecdotal accounts. In the wake of this apparent deadly DUI collision, Matthew Cordell was treated and released from the hospital a free man. But yes, surprisingly, charges were not immediately pressed on Matthew Cordell for this. He actually got the walk. In the meantime, Matthew Cordell would lawyer up and prepare for the inevitable charges coming his way. Now, what you usually see in a situation like this, where a guy is potentially about to face charges, it's expected that the individual would lay low, keep their mouth shut, and avoid the media at all costs, as to not accidentally give any potential damning evidence to the prosecution. I mean, you gotta think about this from a self preservation perspective. But what makes this case remarkable is that Matthew Cordell pretty much does the opposite of what I just described. He confesses to his crime publicly in a way that had never before been seen. He confesses directly to the internet. On September 3rd of 2013, a video would be uploaded to a YouTube channel called Because I Said I Would. The channel was managed by a nonprofit organization of the same name. The video is called I Killed the Man, and it featured Matthew Cordell essentially outright confessing that he indeed was driving under the influence and his actions resulted in the death of Vincent Kenzani. I was out with some friends. We were all drinking really heavily. Just hopping from bar to bar. Just trying to have a good time and I lost control. On that particular night, I made a mistake and got in my truck. Completely blacked out and decided to try to drive home. I ended up going the wrong way down the highway, directly into oncoming traffic. And I struck a car. I killed a man. The video almost immediately went viral and prompted discussion across the internet and the mainstream media. Cordell's confession was received well by the internet masses with thousands of folks praising him in the comments section for taking responsibility for his crime. On the other hand, some suspected that this melodramatically edited confession video featuring swelling orchestral music was simply a disingenuous ploy for Matthew Cordell to possibly get a lighter sentence if ever convicted. The family of Vincent Kenzani would express a similar sentiment and felt as if the video confession had selfish motivations behind it. My name is Matthew Cordell. And on June 22nd, 2013, I hit and killed Vincent Kenzani. This video will act as my confession. When I get charged, I will plead guilty and take full responsibility for everything I've done to Vincent and his family. Whatever the case, seven days after the release of Matthew Cordell's confession video, on September 9th, Cordell was indicted by a grand jury and promptly turned himself in to police, prepared to face justice. Matthew Cordell was charged with aggravated vehicular homicide and one count of operating a vehicle under the influence, charges that could result in a two-year prison sentence at the least and eight and a half years at the most. In line with the narrative presented in his confession video, Matthew would plead guilty to these crimes, and just over a month later, on October 23rd of 2013, Matthew Cordell was sentenced to serve six and a half years in state prison. While in prison, Matthew would do his best to advocate against drunk driving, and he was known to receive and send out a lot of mail from people going through their own issues. On at least one occasion, Matthew was given the opportunity to be recorded while in prison, where he would issue a warning to those thinking they could get away with drunk driving. You know, my hope is that everyone can make the promise not to drink and drive, not to make destructive decisions that could affect others negatively. But if you're not at that point yet, and if you are struggling, Make the promise to seek help. 
make the promise to reach out and ask for someone's hand. In October of 2019, just over six years since the date of his confession, Matthew Cordell was released from prison. He now lives out his life as a semi-private citizen and advocate against drunk driving. Matthew's YouTube confession was remarkable for many reasons. Nothing like it had ever been done before. I personally have mixed emotions regarding this entire situation, and I can empathize with the scrutiny that the family of Vincent Kanzani, you know, sort of expressed regarding the intentions of Matthew's confession video. While many have praised Matthew Cordell for coming forward, it's difficult to really say exactly how much he actually stuck his neck out by doing this confession. After all, prosecutors likely already had everything they needed to arrest and charge Matthew, confession or not. And that being said, sort of now being charitable to Matthew here, the actual benefit of Cordell making the confession in and of itself is debatable. And generally speaking, when you're suspected of a crime, opening your mouth is rarely a good thing and almost always makes your legal situation worse than it was before. And considering that his sentence was on the higher end, I really don't know how much the confession actually helped if getting a lighter sentence was his goal here. Regardless, the Cordell case is easily one of the most remarkable confessions that we've seen in YouTube history. Matthew, six and a half year sentence. What was your reaction? Um, my initial reaction was relief. Um, just relief that you know, my family will get some closure. Hopefully the victim's family will have some measure of closure and uh, begin the healing process and start to move forward. And myself as well, I can start to move forward now. Oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. Our next story is a confession that comes from a YouTuber who's been in the YouTube gaming scene practically since its inception. Dark Side Phil, DSP. Phil's online infamy is a video in and of itself, but today I'll be honing in on a particularly embarrassing chapter of the Dark Side Phil saga. It involves an intimate moment that was unintentionally live streamed to hundreds of viewers and Phil having to eat crow and confess that it actually happened. For those unfamiliar with DSP, the Cliff Notes version of his online career is this. Phil is a 40-year-old gaming creator who joined YouTube back in 2007. A pioneer of the Let's Play genre, Phil would record his gameplay by pointing a camera at his monitor and provide off-the-cuff commentary. Oh, you mean the balls, dude. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Oh, we're scissoring! Oh my god! Phil would become one of the most popular gaming figures on YouTube in the late 2000s and at one point even landed a lucrative machinima contract. But due to his own incompetence and inability to adapt to YouTube's ever-changing trends and quality standards, Phil's relevance peaked in 2011 and his career has essentially been circling the drain ever since. On top of ever dwindling viewership, Phil has long been plagued by damaging controversies. Be it accusations of Phil milking his fans for money, just various criticisms of his quality of content, and just self inflicted drama caused by his own uh, toxicity, if you will. Why am I poisoned? Why am I toxic? But Phil is often frequented by more innocuous controversies, situations that don't necessarily malign his character. They more so just make him look like a complete fool. And one such event transpired on May 1st of 2016. On this day, Phil would go live on YouTube. This broadcast begins with a pre-stream lobby of sorts, with a standby message being shown on screen. The message informing viewers that the stream would be starting soon. However, what Phil failed to realize is that this standby message wasn't the only thing being shown to viewers. Believing that viewers were only seeing this standby screen and not his camera, for the next 13 minutes, folks got to see exactly what Dark Side Phil does when he thinks no one is watching. The first several minutes of this pre-stream lobby seem harmless enough, with Phil apparently browsing the internet. But it's when Phil lays back in his chair that things start to get weird. He begins shaking his arms, almost as if he's stroking something, making bizarre facial expressions, and seemed intently focused on his computer screen.
Yeah, by now you're probably starting to understand what's happening here. After going at it for what comes close to 10 minutes, Phil makes a shocking realization. What is up everyone? Hello, hello and welcome. Oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. While he was momentarily frazzled, Phil would continue on streaming as if nothing happened, and after receiving dozens of comments from stunned viewers in his chat accusing him of jacking it on stream, he attempted to minimize and deny the accusation. But Phil couldn't just sweep this under the rug, and this questionable live-streamed moment was spread around Twitter and YouTube almost immediately. Phil's apparent livestream gaffe of the decade was going absolutely viral. And all of a sudden, my Twitter starts blowing up on my phone, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I look down, and I, I look at the tweets, and uh, people were sending me, hey, Rich, DSP Gaming uh, got caught jerking off on live stream. He didn't realize his camera was on before he started live streaming, and he decided to rub one out, and everyone saw. There was like 100 people in the stream, and they all watched him jerk off. Part of what had contributed to Phil's online infamy at this stage in his career stemmed from a series of mishandled controversies. Now face to face with yet another controversy, many expected Phil to fumble this scandal like the scandals he fumbled in the past. It was expected that Phil would boot up a live stream, deny everything, and basically tell the viewers they didn't see what they saw with their own two eyes. But in an uncharacteristically savvy PR move from Darkseid Phil, the day after this clip went viral, Phil would boot up a live stream in which he essentially confesses that he was indeed choking the chicken, taking the embarrassing moment on the chin and even laughing along with his detractors. Because of a mishap yesterday, I have seen tons of attention thrown my way. It happens. I think that uh, I've handled it pretty well. Uh, in the past, I have been known as a person who unfortunately kind of takes things way too seriously. And when shit happens, instead of kind of rolling with it, I get pissed off. And you know what? That's not the way to handle stuff. I'm certainly not going to uh, hold it against anyone for joking about something that happened that was completely hilarious, in my opinion. I mean, I'll be honest. At first, I was incredibly embarrassed. But after I, the initial shock of knowing what happened, I, I cannot stop laughing about it. I don't know about anyone else. A lot of people are, like, appalled. Oh, my God. Come on. Yes, because we all know that, you know, it's such an unnatural thing. It's such a horrible, horrendous action. Everyone, you know, whoever has done it should be burned at the stake. Then again, everyone who's done it probably didn't inadvertently live stream it. <laughs> While I personally find it absolutely fucking insane that someone can just casually go from jacking it to live streaming in a matter of seconds, at the end of the day, Phil's live streaming gaffe was nothing but uh, just some kind of humorous internet degeneracy. The scandal serving as one of the most disturbing yet funniest drama moments of 2016. Phil's live streamed pleasure session would be forgotten in time and his career continues its perpetual downslope probably one of the more humorous confessions that we've seen on YouTube, that was the time that DSP got caught with his pants down. Tell me why I'm stuck as a virgin with rage. Tell me why I so need a cute girl, my age. Well, here we are, the final chapter, and it's about Chris Chan. No, 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 no! My mother, my father! Wait, 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 wait. Hey. Wait, 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 wait. Chris Chan is a name known far and wide across the web. Quite possibly the most documented person in internet history, the story of Chris Chandler, now transgender woman Christine Chandler, is one that would literally take days to tell. The autistic Sonichu creator has been closely followed by an army of online trolls for close to 15 years now. Every degenerate action taken by Chris documented, cataloged, and scrutinized to exhaustion. I Listen to me. Yes. Listen to me. Yes. Shut that goddamn thing off. 
from drinking their own sperm to assaulting a GameStop employee to putting their father's beloved stamp collection on eBay to the harassment of women, racism, homophobia, and constant e-begging, there's been a plethora of questionable acts committed by Christine documented by trolls over the years. But today I'll be foregoing coverage of every small Chris Chan plot point and be honing in on a particularly heinous, vile, and disgusting act allegedly committed by Christine Chandler. It's an ongoing situation and vomit-inducing story involving a leaked phone call in which Christine appears to confess to sexually assaulting their 79-year-old mother. While early trolling of Christine mostly involved the mockery of the self-authored Sonichu comics, what has proved to be the long-term hook for internet trolls is Christine Chandler's seemingly endless quest to find a quote, boyfriend-free girl. The Chris Chan love quest, if you will. For over a decade now, Christine has tried to find a sexual partner, failing time and time again, be it by intervention of internet trolls or just Christine's disgusting nature keeping girls at an arm's length. I mean, we're talking about someone who keeps containers of their own semen in a freezer here, guys. Christine has described themselves in the past as a, quote, virgin with rage, and their only sexual experience was allegedly with a prostitute in 2012. Well, that's not the only alleged sexual experience Christine has had. This is Barbara Chandler, Christine's widowed mother. Currently 79 years old and rumored to suffer from dementia, Barb has appeared in several videos on Christine's YouTube channel over the years. In almost every appearance, Barbara appears confused and seems to be coached by Christine to ask viewers for money. My name is Barbara Chandler. I'm asking you to uh, help us with uh, car payment uh, by buying the blankets. Uh, they're nice, they're in perfect shape, uh, they'll make a good addition to your home. The video's giving off an uncomfortable and exploitative vibe. My name is Barbara Chan. I'm doing fine. What do you want to know? Ask questions in the comments below or wherever to my associates, yada yada. And come on, say something else. I don't know what else there to do. Many have made allegations of elder abuse towards Christine, but outside of these uncomfortable videos and a handful of suspect tweets, little tangible proof of abuse has ever surfaced. That was until July 30th of 2021, when a disturbing phone call was leaked to the internet implicating Christine of committing one of the most disgusting crimes imaginable. While the exact details of how this call was acquired remain unclear, it was allegedly recorded by a Chris Chan troll of dubious nature known online as Bella. Members of the Kiwi Farms message board alleged that Bella had been engaging in bad faith interactions with Christine behind the scenes for some time. Appearing to Christine as a trustworthy confidant then socially manipulating Christine into making this confession. And what exactly was this confession? In this phone call, Christine claims to have an ongoing sexual relationship with their allegedly demented mother. Christine confesses to regularly having sex with Barb. But how did this happen? How did this come about? Well, one which just mainly I was really, really horny and I need uh, the true and honest uh, relationship to come about. So obviously this was one of the best ways to do it, despite it. I don't want to believe the labels at all, but right. I mean, obviously, tell but the incest fanfics have come true and shit. I didn't have any idea that Barbara was, um, that Barbara knew it had that sort of relationship. I never got any of those uh, vibes. But, um, how did you approach her? I approached her with care and caution. Mm -hmm. and it, was a time, it was a time approach. So I just gave her comfort and talked with her, and we just branched out slow and stay and then I then I encouraged, and I encouraged her positively, let her make the first move. And she wanted to do it. And she oh she did, it. really? She made the first move? Yeah. In what how did she respond when you um when you approached her? What'd she say? Not, I don't I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was kind of it was I think she was partially confused at one point, but but then 
approaching him around, obviously, with the more approaching, with the more approaching that I was uh, doing with her along the way. When did you start having feelings for Barbara? Well, for a long time, I mean, I remember even mentioning some time ago in one of my videos that I even had dreams where I had dreams where I had sex with her, obviously. Really? So. Yeah. How, if you don't mind me asking, I know that's probably personal, you have to answer, but how is the sex? Uh, I'd say it was satisfactory. It took a while. It took a few tries to... It took a few tries, yeah. yeah. She is, a, she is and older. Probably, and plus, uh, also, she's very understanding about the whole thing as well. I was direct with her, still direct and honest with her. And I made sure that I, yeah, obviously, I'm never going to propose marriage to her at all because we're already daughter and father. Yeah, mother and daughter. How and long plus, have you two been going at it? I've been doing it every third night, and the first night being on June 27th. Oh, you have a routine. It took us a few nights to figure figure out what what made what feel right and what didn't feel right. And Does your mother enjoy it? She's having, yeah, she's having a good time, literally. She is? She's yeah. having a good time? She, once this damning confession was leaked to the internet, it went viral immediately and was being discussed on all corners of the internet from Twitter to 4chan to Reddit to Facebook to Kiwi Farms and even the mainstream media. Folks knew Christine was a person of low moral standing, but nobody thought they were capable of something like this. In the wake of the leaked confession, people from around the world flooded the Greene County, Virginia Sheriff's Office with phone calls regarding Christine Chandler, informing them of the alleged incest and elder abuse. Taking these calls seriously, a protective order would be issued against Christine, which compelled Christine to leave the Chandler residence, and for the time being, they would stay at a hotel. While the protective order was issued, Christine was still free, but this freedom wouldn't last long. Just two days after the July 30th confession leak, on August 1st, Christine was arrested at a Regency motel and charged with one count of incest with additional charges pending. The arrest was captured and live-streamed by internet talk show host and provocateur Ethan Ralph. And I continue to stand strong and I maintain everything with Quickville and my side shoes and no shoes and everybody. Yeah, you're lying to about 3,000 people right now, Christian. You're taking everything in strike, you said you're doing good? Yeah, I keep it good faith. Everything is going to work out. Doing good, feeling good? It's happening now. We're on the verge. The merge? Spread. It's happening right it's now, happening isn't it? It's happening right now, it is. We're living it. It's, it's happening right now. Dimensions, Chris. Farewell, Christian. Yeah, the dimensional merge is happening right now. Well, there goes Chris Chan into the Henrico County. Ever since the hotel arrest, Christine Weston Chandler has been in between jail and psychiatric institutions. It isn't exactly clear when or if Christine will go to trial. Preliminary hearings are still ongoing, and many have speculated that Christine could possibly get additional sexual assault charges, as if Barbara does indeed have dementia, she wouldn't be able to consent to the sex. But regardless, what has become clear in recent months is that even behind bars, Christine is still able to embarrass themselves and come across as batshit insane. Since being incarcerated, Christine has sent out several letters to confidants on the outside. Some of these letters have been published to the internet. In letters, Christine presents themselves as a Christ-like figure, and in one disturbing example, Christine states, quote, I am literally Jesus Christ himself, fully reincarnated and fully reawakened. And Christine goes on to suggest that God had called upon her to touch Barbara and heal and cleanse her of her past sins. God, Ned. It's just a saga that never ends. Now, I will say this regarding the alleged incest. Christine is historically known for making up stories and fabricating tall tales, and one can only pray that Christine's infamous incest confession was a delusional account of some deranged fantasy and not something that Christine actually acted on. But there's been so much circumstantial evidence supporting the confession and judicial inquiry into the matter that I fear that Christine actually did the repulsive act that was confessed in that call. And if that truly is the case, may Christine rot. In what might be the most disgusting confession seen on the internet and technically YouTube, that was the leaked Christine Chandler incest call. But that was my compendium of confessions that have wound up on YouTube. Let me know how you guys liked the video down below in the comments section. Slap like, ring that bell, and I'll see y'all next time. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.